In a previous video, we said that acceleration was defined to be the change in velocity per change in time. Another way to think of that is acceleration is how fast or slow the velocity of an object changes. Now, suppose we want to know what the change in velocity is given the acceleration of the object and the time during which the velocity is changing. What we can do is we can algebraically manipulate this equation to come up with a term for the final velocity of an object given the initial velocity and given the acceleration. So to do that, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by delta t. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side. And notice this unit of delta t cancels out with this unit of delta t. And now what you're left with is the change in velocity equals the acceleration of the object times the time interval during which the velocity is changing. Now we can expand this delta v term. We said that delta v was equivalent to the final velocity minus the initial velocity. That is, delta v, or the change in velocity, is equal to the difference of the velocity. And that's going to equal the acceleration times the time interval over which the velocity is changing. Now, if we want to solve for our final velocity, we're going to add our initial velocity to both sides. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side. And when you do that, you should see that v final equals v initial plus the acceleration times the change in time. Now notice that this v initial canceled out with this v initial, and that's why we got v initial on the other side of the equation. Now, this is one of our kinematic equations. It doesn't tell us anything new. It's basically just algebraically manipulating the definition of acceleration, but it gives us a quick way to find the final velocity given the acceleration of the object, the initial velocity of the object, and the time period over which the velocity is changing. Now, as an example of this, suppose you have some object that's accelerating at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. Remember, the velocity of this object is changing by 2 meters per second per second. Let's say the initial velocity of this object is 0 meters per second. That is, it starts from rest. And let's say that you want to know what the final velocity of this object is after this object's had a chance to accelerate for 5 seconds. So you're looking for v final, and that's going to be your question mark. Now, there's two ways to do this. Now, my first way to do this would be to apply the kinematic equation, which I just derived. And to do that, what you need to say is v final equals v initial plus the acceleration times the change in time, the time interval over which this object's accelerating. Now in this case, the initial velocity of this object is zero, so you can rewrite this equation as the final velocity equals the acceleration times the change in time. Now in this case, our acceleration is going to be two meters per second squared, and this object's going to be accelerating for a period of five seconds. Notice this unit of second cancels out with this unit of second, and you're left with units of meters per second, which are the units of velocity. So you get 2 meters per second times 5, which works out to be 10 meters per second. Now this is one approach to finding the final velocity given the initial velocity and the acceleration of the object. Now there's one more intuitive way to do this, and I'll show you that right over here. So if we're given the initial velocity of this object as 0 meters per second, and we know that the velocity of this object is changing by 2 meters per second per second, then after one second of accelerating, this object will be traveling 2 meters per second. You know that this object is accelerating at a constant rate of 2 meters per second per second, or 2 meters per second squared. After one more second, the velocity is going to be 4 meters per second. The velocity, again, has changed by 2 meters per second per second, or 2 meters per second squared. After one more second, the velocity goes from 4 meters per second to 6 meters per second, and after one more second, the velocity goes from 6 meters per second to 8 meters per second. And after one more second, or a total time change of 5 seconds, the velocity increases by another 2 meters per second. And the thing that you should notice is that e during each one second interval of time, the velocity changes by 2 meters per second per second, or at a constant rate. And that's more of an intuitive way to do the exact same formula. Now there's one way to interpret this equation that we just came up with that said the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. If we make a velocity versus time graph, so velocity is a function of time, and we look at the graphical relationship of this equation, basically says is if you have some initial velocity, in this case this would be our initial velocity, v initial, then this equation describes a straight line relationship that looks something like this. In the equation of this line is going to be v final equals v initial plus the acceleration times time. 
Now this is one of many different graphs that you can make from this equation. Suppose you had a negative initial velocity. That is, suppose your initial velocity was this point right here. Then the, the line described by this equation could look like this. And again, this is a velocity versus time graph. So this is a different set of initial conditions. In this case, your initial velocity is this point right here where it intersects with this uh, velocity axis. Now, another interesting point is this point right here, which says that the velocity at whatever time that is, is going to be zero meters per second. And notice this point down here, you have negative velocity. But this velocity versus time curve is still described by the equation v final equals v initial plus the acceleration times time. 